Okay, real fast, real quick. I want to talk about uh, this latest news surrounding the Philadelphia 76ers and the dilemma, dilemma that they are currently in. Right now, uh, I believe last night they lost to the Indiana, the Indiana Pacers and they have been losing. And one of the problems with the Philadelphia 76ers that they didn't address in uh, free agency over the summer was the fact that they need someone who could be another J.J. Reddick. When they uh, traded for J.J. Reddick, J.J. Reddick used to play for the Orlando Magic, got traded to the Philadelphia 76ers, and flourished uh, with, uh, with the Philadelphia 76ers so much so that uh, over last summer, he got a huge contract, and he was one of... Uh, the key players that a lot of contending teams were interested in, but they couldn't sign him because if they would have signed him, and, I, and the team I'm referring to is the Clippers and the Lakers. And the reason why they didn't hurry up and sign him because the uncertain future of Kawhi Leonard. The Lakers were interested in Kawhi Leonard. The Clippers were interested in Kawhi Leonard, but they knew it's going to take uh, some major money uh, to get Kawhi Leonard. Obviously, Kawhi Leonard went to the Clippers and the rest was history. So uh, as they were waiting, J.J. Reddick says, I'm going to strike while the iron's hot, sign a huge contract with the New Orleans Pelicans. I even told you guys when I was grading um, the signings, the free agent signings, uh, I felt like, you know, J.J. Reddick is going to be a, sc- a, a stopgap with the New Orleans Pelicans. Eventually, the New Orleans Pelicans, they're going to trade J.J. Reddick to a contending team. And that contending team is going to give up a lot of assets to get J.J. Reddick because of what J.J. Reddick can do. But J.J. Reddick flourished with the Philadelphia 76ers. And that's why he got that huge contract because it's the effect of Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid are pretty much the same player. Okay? Uh, They get the... The bulk of their offense is underneath the, the rim. Uh, Joel Embiid is a uh, is is, is going to be a dominant center in an era where you don't really need a dominant center to flourish, to be successful, and to win titles. You don't need a dominant center like you did in the eighties and nineties. Times have changed. It's more of a fast break. It's an open floor, fast break, up and down game. And you need players that can play different uh, positions at different times. And Joel LMB is an old school center. Okay. You know, you can probably put him in his power forward, but he's mainly a center. Okay. He has a mindset of a center. He has a skill set of a a center. However, when you look at Ben Simmons, he fits the mold of today's NBA. A guy who can move the ball up and down the court, uh, that can play multiple positions, that can defend multiple players, and his skill set, and he's much young, he's younger than uh Joel MB. Now, Colin Cowher was making the argument last year that uh the Philadelphia he have heard talk that the Philadelphia 76ers uh, were saying if they didn't see any improvement in Ben Simmons, which was his three point shot, and you had to pick with you had to choose one or the other, Joel B or Ben Simmons, they was going to choose Ben Simmons because of the fact that Ben Simmons Ben Simmons skill set fits perfectly in today's NBA. You don't need a dominant center to win titles in today's NBA. And you can and when you and when you talk about trading, you can probably get more for Joel MB than you can for Ben Simmons. That was the argument he was making. Now, I was making the argument last year when everyone was when everyone was focusing on Ben Simmons uh three point game. I, I was saying I was making the argument that, you know, due to him missing a lot of time on the court due to injuries, his even his uh collegiate career, he missed a lo- a, a lot of time to focus and to enhance his three-point game and i say if you give him time he's not going to be a snipe a snipe shooter at the three-point line but he was going to be sort of uh, efficient on the three-point line uh 
slightly average. Okay. Now, I said that last year. This year, nothing has changed with Ben Simmons. When you talk about his three-point game. And that's the dilemma that the Philadelphia 76ers are currently in. They are, you know, you know, last year they had the players around those two players that can fill those uh, holes and to fill those weaknesses. This year, they don't. Now, when I was doing my video grading teams on what they who they acquired in the free agency period, I didn't give the Philadelphia 76ers a high grade due to they didn't feel what they really needed. And they needed someone. There was They should have either paid up and gave J.J. Reddick, uh, overpaid to get J.J. Reddick, and the possibility to lose other players on their roster, or find someone that's similar to J.J. Reddick. And they did neither. Uh, they let J.J. Reddick walk. And in return, they signed a power forward. And I was saying to my, I was scratching my head, going like, "You have Joel and B, Ben Simmons, and now you're signing another power forward." It didn't make a lot of sense. But then I was saying to myself, "They have, uh, they 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 have plenty of time to address the uh, three points, not a uh, sharpshooter, and they haven't." Okay. We're almost in the middle of the season, and they haven't. Okay? So, there have been a lot of trade talk around the Philadelphia 76ers and the possible players that they're interested in. And most of those players that they're interested in are consistently decent or better at the three-point game than Ben Simmons. But if you look at the Philadelphia 76ers, they do have draft picks. But uh, are they going to mortgage their whole future and keep these two players, keep Ben Simmons, <coughs> excuse me, and Joel Embiid and get rid of their future on, uh, you know, on, on a, uh, on a uh, three points, uh, sh a sharpshooter? To me, if you look at what where the Philadelphia 76ers are positioned, I feel like the Philadelphia 76ers, when we talk about the organization, is going to allow this to play through and to play out this year. They're not going to make any knee-jerk decisions on either Joel Embiid or Ben Simmons this year. So if you're expecting that, I don't see that coming from the Philadelphia 76ers organization. If you're talking about either one of them uh, two players, going to be traded uh before this year's trade deadline i don't see that happening i feel like they're gonna wait they're gonna wait this out play it out and if the philadelphia 76ers do not make it to the finals then there's gonna be a lot of changing there's gonna be a lot of people leaving the philadelphia 76ers organization mainly the gm uh and the coach i don't think brent B brown is going to survive this year if he does not at least get this team to the NBA Finals. The problem is they're going to have a hard time making it to the Eastern Conference Finals because of the matchup issues that they have with other teams in the NBA uh, when you talk about the East. The Boston Celtics are an upgrade. That's a team that will be very difficult for the Philadelphia 76ers to defend. Because they have a multitude of players that can play different positions and are pretty nice uh, on their perimeter game as well as their three point shot. Okay, so when when you got when you got issues with that, it's going to be a huge uphill climb for the Philadelphia 76ers just to get into the Eastern Conference Finals. Toronto is a decent is a decent team without Kawhi Leonard. And Kawano, uh, Toronto, when you look, when you compare them matching them up to the uh, Boston Celtics, that's going to be a long drag out series, okay. And even if somehow, some way, they make it and go to the NBA Finals, they're going to have a hard time defending the Clippers or the Lakers. 
the Clippers, that's going to be an easy four to five game series. And with the Lakers, uh, possibly six. Okay. But they don't have anyone that can, uh, 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 you know, that will be uh, LeBron James finest series if he has to match up against Ben Simmons because he can easily defend Ben Simmons without, uh, uh, you know, wasting all his energy on the defensive end because he can dare Ben Simmons to take that three-point shot and nine times out of ten he's going to miss it and nine times, and then that means that the Lakers could win a title if that's the scenario okay Anthony Davis uh and Joel Embiid that's, you know, you can pick either or. They're going to, uh, when you look at their matchup, that's not the matchup that's going to determine whether or not uh, which team is going to win uh, the NBA uh, cha- uh, title. The matchups are Ben Simmons and LeBron James. If LeBron James uh, eats and flourish off of Ben Simmons, and if Ben Simmons can't retali- retaliate with a three-point uh, game, then it's going to be a long night for the Philadelphia 76ers. And uh, the rest, they say, is history. When you talk about their coach, when you talk about their GM, they're going to go into a new direction. They're going to bring someone They're going to bring someone else in to be the new GM. He's going to bring his own coach and his own philosophy, his own scheme. And that means that uh, it's probably going to be a scheme that's not going to be uh, kind to either Ben Simmons or Joel Embiid. Obviously, he's going to he's going to bring a coach that's going to play that's going to have the same scheme similar to today's NBA, which is up and down players that can play multiple positions. Okay, not having a great player play one position rather than having a decent or b- 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 below average player playing multiple positions, getting a greater result than that one great player just only playing one position. And that's where the Philadelphia 76ers find themselves in. So, uh, to me, uh, I I felt like the Philadelphia 76ers should have gotten improved uh, on their perimeter game. They, They did someone who can consistently hit that three-point shot, they did. Uh, I feel like, uh, and I also said uh, in that same video, uh, J.J. Reddick's going to be finding himself another home because contending teams are going to mortgage away wherever they have at their disposal to get J.J. Reddick uh, for someone, uh, uh, when we talk about contending teams, that can, that can, that can knock down buckets. And... That's going to make him extremely port, uh, important uh, for this uh, NBA uh, playoff run. I see a lot of contending teams interested in JJ Reddick. Okay, so JJ Reddick, uh, you know, he's not going to be in New Orleans much longer. And I said that uh, in a video. Uh, in I said that in a video uh, when I graded uh, the NBA uh, teams who I thought who won, who lost. Okay, so. That's where we're at with uh, Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons. You, they're, they're phenomenal players, but they're, they're two players that play the same position, you know. And in this year, and in and in today's NBA, you don't need you don't need uh, uh, two players that play the same position. I'm up out of here.